Oh, well, I was just thinking today, I know <laughs> it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? If I start thinking. Anyway, I've done that work on my bogging videos, and I was thinking, you know, um, to show wood, and I thought, oh, I think I, I've lost some videos, haven't I? And I'm not doing anything terribly interesting. I thought one or two ideas upcoming. Anyway, now it's it's not a big deal. <laughs> now, well, it is a big deal, isn't it? But for the wrong reasons, it's my birthday day, and uh, I've had lots of nice messages, you know, which is appreciated, but. We celebrate for the wrong reason now, don't we? You know, we're winding down like a bummer now. I'm struggling a bit now. Anyway, I thought, just for a video, you might like it, we'll do story time. And I'll use the video that I did of wood, and I'm just going to tell you some of the tales and the adventures that we had, or misadventures. I just thought of a few, because one or two I know have read them. So anyway, here goes. You know, let us know as usual what you think, and I hope you just might enjoy them, and it also might give you a bit of a laugh as well. <laughs> because some of them are, well, they were amusing, if not a little bit nerve wracking at the same time. We'll see how we get on. Well, there's two in particular that come to mind. And the, the uh, I just got it actually, just got it. And, uh, I wasn't worried about going out in ice, you know, it didn't hurt out. Anyway, I went to Bardney, took my mate for a trip, and it was winter time. And, uh, as I say, but what I didn't know, at Bardney Lock, and if you look at the, I haven't got any of, uh, on here, but if you look how to use a lock, you'll see it. Well, what it is, the length upstream doesn't have any flow. Uh, there's a sluice a mile upstream and they open that to let the water flow around the hole with them and so there's no flow and it's on the wrong side of the bank to get the sun and it gets cold and there was some ice on the river well there wasn't any well there was a tiny bit in the lock nothing at all you know and it's got a, a big bar on the front metal bar on the front oh I thought we'll be all right anyway I backed out and I thought, God, I don't steer very well. Well, the first thing that happened was I broke my rudder blade off. Anyway, I had some steering, and we set off through the ice. Didn't slow it down at all. Anyway, we'd gone about a mile. Suddenly, there's some water in the cabin. I mean, it's serious, right? My mate with me, he, uh, I said, oh, it's a pump on. Well, I couldn't hear the pump. The pump was working. The bilge pump, automatic bilge pump was working, but... Uh, I didn't hear it for the engine running, you see. Anyway, it was running, so Christ, head for the shallows. Anyway, we were near a more a pontoon mooring, so I went to that thinking, you know, if the worst come to the worst, I could tie it to the side and hold it up enough till we found what was up. Anyway, what happened was, the shards of ice, unbeknown to me, had worn through the lower end of the plank, and not all had come out. Well, water was rushing in, like, as soon as we stopped, it stopped coming in, and the pump emptied it. And uh, I always carried some, what I call gobbo. It was a, a mixture of very fine sawdust, grinding dust and sawdust with bit black bitumen. And it makes a blooming good paste. It's, oh, it, it really is. It's, it sets underwater anything. So with a bit of, uh, what was it, hardboard, I think. We tacked a bit of hardboard on the back and gobboed it up and come back very, very steadily through the ice. So that was the first blooming adventure, wasn't it? That was one of my lessons. It lasted a long while, that did, by the way. Lasted all the while I had the boat. Never a problem again. But if you look at some of the pictures, you'll see that I, to stop it happening again, um, I put some plywood, some uh, heavy plywood on the front, you know, just to stop it wearing the lower planks again, if ever we were caught out. Well, then another of my adventures, and I've sort of glossed this on one of the things, one of my stories, I think. Um, I, I used to go boating early. I decided to go as soon as on, on my own to a Boston trip from Chapel. And I decided to go on my own. And uh, we got to, I was, because it's, you know, on your own, there's not a lot to do when you're boating. And it was early enough at night, it wasn't dark like. And I 
I'm not scared of going anywhere on it, I wasn't. You know, I used to chug my nose in the bank and leave it ticking over. You know, and even get off like that. If, even if it went sideways, as long as you had a rope on it, it wasn't going anywhere, you know. Anyway, I was going along and well, suddenly we ground to halt. Well, again, I wasn't worried because, it, you know, the props only, what was it? Not a foot under the water. It was quite easy, and it was at the back of the boat, so it was easy to get to. Anyway, not this time. And I got my stove and I got some Wellingtons, but I was too deep. It walked come over my Wellington, so it was blooming cold. No, I couldn't do it today, I tell you. And uh, so anyway, I took me, stripped down my T-shirt and got in the water and got a knife and started hacking this stuff off. Well, I, I don't know what it is, but I think I, I know it was like one of those nylon nets made out of fishing line. And one of those nets that sort of uh, you put over small trailers that sheep have to keep, you know, if you ever got a couple of sheep in a trailer, something like that. So anyway, it must have been something like that. Anyway, four cuts with this knife and it went blunt. I'm like, blum and heck, I'm in trouble here. Oh, and I couldn't move, by the way. I couldn't drag my boat to the bank because this net was embedded in the riverbed as well. It'd been there a long time. You know, I only went to have a look under a tree. There was nothing there. It was I was just really passing time. I thought, what's that under there? And I just went for a look, you know, pass a bit of time. Anyway, <laughs> I got caught out. It didn't matter, we were near a pub, you know, and I had some gangplanks to get on the bank, and of course I had Barney with me, so we had a, a bit of a job to do that. Anyway, we, we managed it, but I was in the water several times. Anyway, I rang mate, rang Roy, and told him. He said, do you want rescue? I said, well, I don't know, I probably will. Anyway, they were on for a rescue mission, so they came the next day and dragged me off. Meanwhile, I got in the water several times. Well, it was so cold, you could only do about, you know, a few cuts with a knife, and it went blunt anyway. And then get out and, you know, take your blooming clothes off and had the fire going, and luckily it didn't take long to dry, about ten minutes, and then have another go. Anyway, what I did, I, I walked up to someone I knew, and... Uh, they had a big carving knife. In fact, I've still got it somewhere. And uh, it was that, well, it, even that went blunt. I had to keep getting out and sharpening it, but it actually did the job. And then they pulled me free. And then when I set off for home, what happened was that the prop, I must have done enough cutting to, to get rid of it, you know, and the prop started turning again. And there was only a little bit left. So anyway, the, I came home. Next day, I went back to my boat and... Uh, just got, dragged it to near the bank and pulled it out. Um, just stood in my well, it's like I say, it was only just under the water, you know. And cut the rest off and went back to Boston and fetched someone uh, to who had his boat dropped in there. You know, they had the boats lifted out and he was moored at Boston at that time, so he wanted to ride back. And so I fetched him on my boat, you know. That was all right. So I think they were like the probably two of the. Uh, heart stopping moments because someone mentioned boating you know and they had a, a really good it was a really good saying because he said it's it's hours of tranquility uh, interspersed by moments of sheer terror and that sums it up exactly if it, when it boating's fantastic but when it goes wrong it goes wrong very quickly it's a bit like uh, I suppose you can compare it to you you're driving down on a on a clear road, you know, and suddenly you hit a fog bank and you're going a bit too fast and run into something. You know, it's it's probably that sort of situation. I don't know, but uh, oh, but the escapades, as I say, I could uh, oh, I can I can tell you stories for several hours, but I'm not going to. You know, we'll we'll cut this to a few minutes. But another story going under bridges. We're talking about. Someone mentioned that there isn't much headroom. Well, no, there isn't. And there's a very low bridge up the Kyme. It's called Harpenny Hatch Toll Bridge. And the first time I went up, I couldn't quite get underneath it. But I was with some people on narrowboats. They'd gone for a trip to turn round, and there was, oh, eight or nine of them. So they all clambered on my boat, and I managed to just scrape underneath it. In fact, it's that bridge that's just been shown here. And uh, I just managed to scrape underneath this bridge with a lot of people on board. Anyway, we got there and they said, right, we're going back. I said, well, make sure you stop at the bridge, you know, don't leave me stranded, else I'd have been up there and, 
another, I don't know how far, about five mile walk back, I think, to chapel. So, um, as I say, we've had plenty of escapades on it. Um, but up the kind there, that was one of the wondrous sights of the world, that tower in the middle of the river. It really was. Anyway, there's just a couple of me hairy escapades. There's been several more, but I think that's the uh, the most amusing. Shall we put it like that? Right, I think this will be long enough, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And if you do want some more, well, by all means, give us a shout. You know, I'm sure I can think of something else. All right. <laughs> Thanks ever so much. Cheers.